Hi and welcome to this short demonstration on how to get started with Tracealizer. For this demonstration I'll be using an STM32L475 board uh, with uh, stm 32 cube ide If this is not what you're using, no worries, keep watching. The procedure is essentially the same for any free ArtOS system and also very similar for safe ArtOS and Micrium Mitre C OS 3. In all three cases, the Tracealizer support is provided via Persepius Trace Recorder library. For FreeRTOS and Micrium Micro CoS 3, this is provided within the Tracealizer installation and can be found via the Help menu. The purpose of the Trace Recorder is to record software events either from the ArtOS kernel, from the middleware or from explicit logging in your application code and then provide this data to the Tracealizer host application. To use the trace recorder, we need to integrate it in the project build, and next I will show you how. So what we have here is a clean basic project with just free autos and a dummy task that has been generated by STM32CubeMX, the configuration tool. The first step is to copy the recorder code into the project. I'll begin by creating a folder for the recorder code, so my project remains nice and organized. I'm just doing a drag and drop here and excluding the stream ports folder. This is only needed when using streaming mode, but today we'll settle for a snapshot mode, which is easier to begin with. Now the IDE asks me if I want to copy or link the files. I recommend to copy to avoid that the configuration files are accidentally shared between different projects. Okay, the code has now been copied into the project. Now we need to make some updates in the configuration header file, trcconfig.h. First, remove this line. This is just a reminder to include the processor header file. For ARM Cortex-M devices, this is needed to provide access to the SIMSYS core library. On other architectures, this is not always necessary. In this case, I think the right file is called stm 32 l 4 xx.h. Next uh, we have the hardware port setting. This specifies what hardware specific definitions that should be used for the timestamping of events. We'll use this port, TRC hardware port ARM Cortex-M, that works for all ARM based MCUs. Next we verify that snapshot mode is selected. This means that the data is kept in a circular RAM buffer that you then read out on demand via the debugger. Finally, we need to specify which free ArtOS version that is used. If you're not sure which free ArtOS version you're using, check the free ArtOS source code. The version is stated in the top of each file. The other settings here are mainly filters regarding which events to include in the trace. You can modify these settings to reduce the amount of data, but let's leave them at their default values for now. In the startup code, main.c, we also need to call vtraceenable with the argument trc start. And finally, in the freeartos configuration file, freeartosconfig.h, there are two or three more things we need to check. First, we should ensure that config use trace facility is defined and set as one. Next, it says here that when using STM cube MX, we should comment out this line to avoid duplicate definitions of the SysTick handler. This has nothing to do with the trace recorder, but let's do that to avoid any problems. Then, in the end of the file, we need to include the main header file of the recorder, trcrecorder.h. This will add definitions that populates the trace hooks in the FreeRTOS kernel, so they call the recorder library on important events like task switches. If you get problems like this, it can't find the header file. It's because we need to update the list of include paths. 
So we go to the project settings and add the two folders containing header files, config and include. Okay, now it seems to build just fine. Zero errors, zero warnings, good. So let's start a debug session and try it. We let it run for a few seconds and then halt the execution. We can check that some data has been collected by inspecting the global data structure recorder data pointer. Make sure it's not null and that the fields have reasonable values. To upload the data and view it in Tracealyzer, we use the Persepio plugin. This works with most Eclipse based IDEs. To install this plugin, visit the Eclipse Marketplace and search for Persepio. Before using it for the first time, open the preferences and make sure that the path to tracealizer.exe is set correctly and that the right RTOS is chosen. You can then select Save Snapshot Trace and it should load in Tracealyzer. To learn more about the Tracealyzer analysis tool, check out the other videos and articles on our website. If you have any problems getting started, feel free to contact support at persepio.com. Thank you.